There's a young lady that comes to church here, y'all, and, and uh, she don't want to say anything because she's kind of backwards. But uh, several months ago, she, the doctors told her that she had a life-threatening kidney disease, and there was nothing else that they could do for her and to prepare for the worst. This was the report. In other words, she needed a miracle, and if she didn't get a miracle, she wasn't going to make it. I mean, they told her she was not going to live long. It was that bad. And man, that bothered me. We prayed for her, and, and she's, you know, just we prayed for her, and, and the report was still there. And I'm, I'm not the one that done it. God healed her. But I went home one night, and I was crying over that. It bothered me. I said, Lord, either we got what you said we got, you said we could lay hands on a sick, and they, they would recover. Either that's true, or we're missing something. And if I'm missing something, I want to know what it is. But I'm expecting a miracle in her life, Lord. That's not right. She's young. She's a beautiful young girl. I know her daddy. And I said, she has a right to life. And I just come against that. I was, I was really, in, in a, in a, I was just burdened down over that. I just really wanted to see God move. And I'm telling you, she got a report the other day. She don't have to take no more dialysis. They kept giving her dialysis because they, they just couldn't believe that she didn't need it. Well, you know, we better go ahead and give you another one just to make sure. They could not understand what had happened, but God healed her. And uh, she's completely off of dialysis now. Somebody say amen. Give Jesus a hand. And please hear me. It wasn't just my prayer. All of us were praying. But sometimes you've got to get down to business. Sometimes it's an effectual, fervent prayer, the Bible says, that avails much. It's not just a, Lord, touch me in Jesus' name, amen. Let's go eat. <laughs> You know, there's, there's an effectual, fervent prayer. There's a, there's a moaning prayer. There's a concern prayer. There's a prayer where you really get burdened for somebody and you just, you just really go to the Lord about it. Those prayers avail much. Somebody say amen. There's a difference. Jesus had compassion on the multitudes and he healed them. Jesus had compassion on the blind man and he healed them. That compassion, that concern, is effectual fervent prayer. It's something from down in here where you groan for him. You just, you just really, it bothers you. It wakes you up at night and you cry for him. Those prayers are powerful, y'all. Don't quit praying. I told y'all years ago, I come in one night and I'd been out partying. I'd been gone for days and Mary was praying for me. And uh, she, kept, she kept the house going. She kept the kids going to school and, and Eddie was going crazy and I'd show up once in a while and I was just messed up. And I came in one night and I heard Mary praying. We had a little old 12 by 60 trailer we lived in and the walls were thin and I heard Mary praying for me and it just rocked my boat. I stood out in the yard half drunk and I was listening to Mary pray and cry for me. Oh God, it touched me, it touched my heart. And uh, I told the people in Akron, Ohio the other day, if I hadn't met Mary, I said I would have probably self-destructed or I'd have been in prison. And I said, she just prayed me in. That little Cherokee just prayed me in, and I, I give her the credit all the time because God sent her to me because I needed help. And uh, God has sent you all help too. He sent people to you. He sent the bridge to you, y'all. You need a place where you can be comfortable and go to church, and I'm glad you're here. And visit by all means, but don't visit crazy churches. Okay, go to good churches, please. Because you sit under Goofy, you're going to be. Whew. I get people come here all the time to have some of the ideas. I said, where in the world? What you been sitting under? There's some good churches in this area. There's some good men and women of God that can feed your soul. And there's some goofy fruit loops in this area, y'all. I'm sorry, but they are. So be careful where you go and what you sit under. Can I say that? I did, didn't I? So be careful what you sit under. I'm telling you, I've told them they're crazy. I have. I said, you're crazy. You're just crazy. What are you doing? You're hurting people. You're feeding people a bunch of stuff that ain't in the Bible. And I said, you're getting them all messed up. Oh, God, I don't want to stand before the Lord and him say, what in the world did you teach my people? What kind of food did you give my sons and daughters. What's wrong with you? Hello, I don't want him to do that to me. Peck me on the forehead. Thank God we got truth. Somebody say truth. You'll know the truth and what will the truth do? 
it'll set you free after you know it. After you get truth, if you get error, you're going to live in error. If you get goofy, you're going to be goofy. Hey, man, some of y'all drug goofy in here behind you, man. You had it tied to you. <laughs> Ask me how I know. Because I used to have goofy tied to me, too. <laughs> and I had a preacher said, man, you're goofy. <laughs> you need help. And he didn't say it that way. He said, Eddie, <laughs> We need to sit down at the Bible and discuss some of this stuff that you believe. Where is that? Show me where that's at. I couldn't find it. There was beliefs that I had and things that I really thought was right. I couldn't find it. It wasn't in there. Thank God for a good preacher, man. It told me the truth. Because I found out the truth and the truth made me free. Praise God. And I'm free now. I'm real free. Glory to God. Give Jesus a big hand.